Today I'd like to talk to you about how iron works out in the lawn towards the end of the winter. This is part of my spring lawn care basic series for beginners. To start off this quick video, I first want to say iron is basically what the plant uses to make chlorophyll. It's pretty important. It's not one of the big three, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium uh, nutrients, but it is awful important for the grass. Now, if you live in a southern state, more than likely you have not experienced freezing temperatures throughout the year. You're probably growing a warm season grass, which means it might have gone dormant anyway, but not because of freezing temperatures, partially because it was colder temperatures than your grass type likes, and because of low light levels from the sun. Towards the end of winter, sunlight levels are getting pretty big again, and if you've got enough chlorophyll in that plant, it should start waking up, especially as the temperatures start increasing. If you live in one of those southern states, or a place that doesn't get particularly warm, then yes, adding, adding iron to your lawn is going to help green it up before spring even comes towards the end of winter, maybe even in midwinter if it's a pretty mild winter where you live. For those people that live in colder climates, like me, my winters stay pretty cold well into early spring, but that doesn't mean that my soil is frozen all the way into spring. There are times when it's pretty cold in the months of March, but my soil is not frozen. For cold season grasses and lawns where the soil is not frozen, it is an acceptable idea to put iron down on the lawn once your soil temperatures get up to around 40 degrees on average. Many people know that it's dangerous to put iron on lawns when the outside temperature is very hot. But on the cold end of the spectrum, it's not particularly dangerous. It's just a challenge to get the iron down into the soil and get the root system to absorb it. So long as your cold season grass is sitting on soil that is about 40 degrees, you can put a small dose of iron on the lawn so long as you're not putting nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium on the lawn, especially nitrogen and potassium. If there's excess potassium in the lawn, then that's going to hurt the plant's availability or the plant's ability to uptake the iron. And although I, I am a big proponent of using potassium in the lawn, here's my cat again, he's always here. And although I am a big proponent of using potassium in the lawn, during the late winter, if you're putting iron down, I'd stay away from it. It's too early in the season for nitrogen because your grass doesn't want to grow, even when your soil temperatures are averaging around 40 degrees. Plus, there's already nitrogen in the root system, stuff that those roots absorbed in the late fall to prepare for the spring flush, which is inevitable. All right, you're cut off. One of the best ways to get the iron down into the lawn at the end of winter is to add a dose of humic acid, and it's also to add a dose of micronutrients. Now the micronutrients are not necessary, but they do help with photosynthesis. So the iron, once it gets absorbed into the plants, that's gonna be facilitated better by the humic acid. Chemically speaking, they kind of bond and then they hold hands and the humic acid brings the iron into the root system. And that's gonna help the grass plant start creating more chlorophyll so that it can green up. But part of that greening up process is the process of photosynthesis. And your grass is gonna photosynthesize better if it's got adequate amount of manganese and magnesium in it. So you can very easily find micronutrient uh, liquid fertilizers they do not contain NPK. You can very easily apply straight humic acid to your lawn with nothing else in it. And you can very easily apply liquid. I wouldn't recommend granular in the early parts of the year because it takes too long to break down in a cold lawn setting. But a liquid will go on quite easily. You can mix those three things together and you're not going to stimulate top growth, but you are going to get that lawn starting to turn green because by the end of February, there is plenty of sunlight in the sky for that grass to thrive. Late February is basically the equivalent of mid to early October in terms of amount of sunlight in the sky. So there's ample sun to green up. We just need to get it going. If you have the ability to test the temperature of your lawn, I would recommend doing that. Stick a compost thermometer down in there and find out what temperature it is. Sometimes, especially on the sunny days, you'll find that the top half inch of soil 
is going to be 40 to 45 degrees, but if you plunge your compost thermometer two to three inches into the ground, you might still find it being only 35 to 40. If it's not frozen up to three inches down, then you're probably okay. If it's close, then you might wanna add a small surfactant into a hosed-in sprayer a few days before you do your iron application. That's going to get water to travel deeper into the ground. Because of the way that water can heat things up faster or cool things off faster, it's going to actually thaw your lawn a little bit faster if you can get that water deeper into the ground, especially if it's warmer water than the ground temperature is. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they're putting iron on the lawn at any point during the year is they're putting iron onto a lawn that has a high pH. Now, high pH doesn't mean crazy high. The ideal lawn pH is probably in the 6 to 6.3 range. Iron, once you get up over 6.5, has a hard time absorbing into the grass under any scenarios whatsoever. That's why some lawn iron products contain sulfur, and sulfur over time will slowly lower the pH of your lawn. If your lawn's pH is too high, then none of this matters in the first place. You're actually going to be wasting your time. You'll get more results and better results by simply taking the steps necessary to correct the pH in your lawn over the course of the coming growing season. There are actually lots of other little small mistakes and big mistakes that people make in their lawns throughout the year. I would love it if you subscribe to this channel because you're gonna learn quite a bit about some of those mistakes over the course of the coming season. As I said before, this is only part of my spring lawn care guide. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and watch those videos as they come out and maybe take a look at some of these other videos that I already have in my archive. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this was helpful and I really hope to see you in the next video.